Hello, everyone. Welcome in to Mid-American Conference Media Day from Ford Field in Detroit. I'm Steve Baker on Miami On Demand, joined by the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference, John Steinbrecher. And, uh, John, you just held your press conference, annual press conference, and really talked about a lot of different things. We'll talk football in a few, but let's talk about some of the issues that you touched on and things that, that you as the commissioner of the conference think the conference ought to be looking at, obviously the NCAA ought to be looking at. One uh, that you immediately touched on was freshman eligibility, the white paper by the Big Ten uh, brought that up, you know, last year, and uh, it's really something you're very familiar with because you studied for it for your doctoral uh, degree. But uh, it's really something that uh, people want to look at, but don't necessarily you you believe don't necessarily believe you have to. Correct. Um, we're all concerned about seeing our students, student athletes, attain their goals academically. It means graduating, moving on. Um, in certain sports nationally, we've not had the success rates as high as we would like. Football and basketball we point to, although in our league we're doing pretty good things on that. And so the, white, the Big Ten last year put out a white paper that floated the idea of, well, maybe the way, one of the ways to get at that is through saying freshmen in football and men's basketball are ineligible. They can concentrate more on their studies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when you study it, it sounds good. It doesn't happen that way. Um, and I haven't found a study yet, and I th what, mine was one of the largest, if not the largest, and in fact it used the Big Ten as its sample. Um, playing or not playing, playing does not have an effect on the academic achievement of student athlete. And I get back to it's really about academic preparation. Are we bringing in students who are ready for the rigors of the institution they're attending? And where we do a good job of that, and where we provide support services, Generally speaking, if, if the kid is motivated to uh, pursue the degree and go to class and do this, then they're going to be okay. That, to me, that's the bottom line. And you know, talk about freshman eligibility and those freshmen being able to come in and do the job. There's there's all kinds of support services, academic support services, that sort of thing. One of the other topics you touched on was the well-being of student athletes, and we're not just talking about that academic support. We're talking about that physical support and that mental support, and that's what you talked a lot about in, in your press conference. Uh, realizing that kids, in, and not just student athletes, but certainly we're talking about student athletes, come in and either already have an issue that they're dealing with, or certainly that anxiety level of college and athletics and everything else contributes to a mental problem that, that really, it's, it's on us, the, the, the universities and the conferences and the NCAA to take care of and help them with. Well, it, it's an area that our faculty reps and our students themselves came to us and said, we think we're being underserved here, that there's an area that's not not enough attention is being put here. And so again, we had a task force that looked at it for about 18 months and they said, you're right. And so we developed a protocol for these are the services that a minimum should be available. These are the educational efforts that should be put in place. And so we want to make sure that kids have safe havens to go to with, if and when they have issues and need help, that they know they can go somewhere that's not held against them or they're thought any less. Uh, mental health issues should be no different than treating a sprained ankle, quite frankly, in terms of, of what we think about it. And so it's, it's, it's building uh, all the education, and things around that we need to, and we're trying to take a leadership position on that right now. Certainly another level of support that I, I agree with you needs to be looked into. Let's talk about transfers, and you talked a lot about that there. I mean, we're, there's all kinds of transfers out there, but we, we, the area that you were specifically talking about is, is that senior graduate that is transferring, eligible to play right away. Uh, you want the NCAA, you want the Mid-American Conference, number one, then the NCAA to kind of take a look at the rules involving that uh, that senior transfer. Tell, tell us about that. Well, I do. When, when the rule, the senior transfer or graduate transfer, when it was put in place, it was for to be a very narrow exception. It was to say, for that young man or woman, if they've come completed their education, undergraduate education, yet still have eligibility remaining. They want to go on and pursue a graduate degree, but that degree is not offered at the school they're currently at. They should be able to transfer and be eligible immediately at that other school. Makes a lot of sense. Well, it's not being executed quite that way. So what you have now in too many situations, I shouldn't paint with so broad a brush, but what you're seeing is now you have a kid who decides he wants to now leave after three years there, and he'll look around and he'll find a graduate program that's not listed at their school, whether they're interested or not. And then maybe they stay a semester if they're in football, or maybe 
a semester and a half if they're in basketball, and there's no academic accountability. It doesn't count in the APR, uh, and that's a problem. And so one of the ways to get at it is to bring the academic accountability back to it and say, okay, if you want to do that, that's fine, but that person is going to count in your APR cohort. Secondly, I think you ought to attach the financial aid requirement to it. If you're going to go and pursue that person for a graduate transfer, you have to commit to two years of financial aid, and that counts against you whether you use it or not. So you're getting one year of eligibility for two years of financial aid. And so the school has to really decide, do they want to make that kind of commitment or not? That is, that's the strong commitment, and you know, and, and you mentioned that you know, what about having, you know, you were asked about, well, what ha what about having that senior set out? Number one, I don't think the fans are going to buy that, and certainly I don't think it's even fair to ask somebody that just graduated from school, well, you have to sit out. But certainly, I think that two-year commitment uh, on, on behalf of the university with financial aid, and I mean, as we talked about, you know, it, it's a two-year degree anyway. You know, I think that level of commitment adds a lot to it. You know, I agree, and if if both sides go at it in that way, so be it. It still provides the flexibility for the student, which I think is appropriate, and it builds in a level of accountability on both sides of the equation. Now let's talk football, and you know, that's why everybody is here at Mid-American Conference Media Days, and uh, there's, a, there's a lot individually we can talk about with these teams, but for the conference, uh, things just continue to get better. I mean, all of the bowl affiliations, the, the TV deals, uh, things, uh, it, I, I don't want to say couldn't get better because obviously they get better every year, but it's been growing and getting better every year for the conference. You know it has. The, the exposure stuff, the TV stuff, that's all in place, and what we've really got to focus on and what it comes down to when it's all said and done it's about what you do on the field we're, we're we'll be known for what we do on the field so if we have a good year if we're winning those non-conference games if we're winning those bowl games if we get into that host bowl what that will do in terms of raising the perception of our individual programs in this conference is just tremendous and it, it all comes back to that it's not about any of the coaches or myself flapping our lips and talking about this or that, it's, it's, this is a very bottom line enterprise. Uh, we're judged by those last games and, and we want to win them. And, uh, you know, football, uh, you know, we talk about exposure and the midweek games, you addressed that uh, in your press conference. And uh, uh, over 10 years now, or very close to 10 years, we've been playing uh, Thursday night, Tuesday night football in November. And uh, while, it, you know, the fans may not like it, they're the home fans uh, to a certain degree, it's been very, very good for the conference. Oh, it's very much so. Again, it's helped make us a national conference. That, the exposure component combined with great success, lifts you up. Um, it, you need both and, and we've had that and so we have the facilities to lift ourselves up on a year-by-year -year basis when we do things. We're, we've got our own night of the week to play to play football. That's unique. Um, and, and I get the hardship on the midweeks in, this, in November. Um, I, I understand that, but I'd also remind people it gets cold and wet on Saturdays sometimes too, and we, we sometimes forget that. Where, where the games have been meaningful, when people are in the heart of a conference race, generally speaking, the attendance has been pretty good at those events. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Looking forward to another great year in Mid-American Conference football. Steve, it's great to be with you, and I look forward to being with the Red Hawk fans sometime this year. Very good. Commissioner John Steinbrecher joining us on Miami On Demand.